guys? Welcome back. Little baby burger buns are back. <laughs> you can't even see them, they're not in frame. Dang it, but the, uh, the tiger sweater's back too. I'm actually burning up, it's crazy. It's like 30 degrees outside, but uh, my heat in my house has completely reciprocated, so. <sighs> Today, guys, we are playing with some really high-end clean makeup, and it is from the brand Kiarwise. I did talk about them in my 15 clean brands that I want to try in 2019, but we're getting it in early. I just got really excited about these. I saw them on uh, Beautylish and also on Instagram and just a bunch of other places that I ran across this. Their whole appeal being that this is a reusable kind of metal container. It is extremely heavy. It is, you know, this swivel design. It's, you know, you're seeing things like this in Lila B and stuff like that, but it's got this little pin prick in the back on each of these where you pop them out and you can replace the individual pans and keep the packaging forever. This is not a first impression. I have been wearing this a little bit lately to kind of get a feel for it because it's a little bit different, but we are going to do a full day wear test on this so that you guys can see how it wears over the course of a regular eight hour day. And before I zoom you guys in, I just want to say hello to anyone who is new. If you like clean beauty, if you like cruelty-free vegan makeup, those kinds of things, that is what we focus on here on my channel. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in that. And let's go ahead and zoom in and put some of this makeup on my face. I cleaned out my beauty room. It's like a zen space right now. I love having all these surfaces clean. It feels really good. So I picked up the foundation in the shade Lightness right here. And I also picked up the translucent powder. And this is what she looks like. It is a relatively small pan, but I've never panned anything that I bought for this channel. So I'm not really that concerned about it. So this is the kind of cream consistency of this. And this isn't airtight or anything. So this is very, you know, stable. It's not drying out on me or anything. And it has this really great opacity to it, but it's also still creamy and not super matte. It does build beautifully, you will see in a second. I have not been wearing concealer with this because it builds so beautifully. And with the translucent powder, I have found that it works absolutely gorgeously under all of my powder products. And I have also worn it alone without the powder uh, with my cream products. So this does promise to be kind of the be all end all of your clean beauty. So of all of the foundations that I have reviewed so far in the kind of clean beauty category, we've seen things that kind of run the gamut between performance and ingredients and wear time and dewiness and things like that. This promises to be all of it. <laughs> the ingredients, the performance, the wear time. This, like I said, is not an inexpensive product. We'll get into the pricing and stuff like that so that I can tell you guys kind of like by the ounce and stuff. I'll have to look online. Why don't I shut up and let's put some makeup on my face. This is the way that I have been accustomed to applying this lately is with a sponge, like a dampened sponge. This is the one from Thrive. This is the only one that has remained like non-irritating to my skin. So this is going to be a very flexible formula. You're going to be able to build this to whatever coverage level you really like. I've worn it very light on my skin and then you can kind of build it in other areas that you need a little more coverage. Although you guys, spoiler, I've been using that blue tansy mask and my melasma is fading. It's freaking awesome. Let's be real though, I've been like multi-masking because of all of the like purging that my skin has been doing lately. I've been just taking extra, extra, extra care of her lately. I'm seeing really good kind of brightening results and even these kind of big scary like cystic zits that I've had are starting to go away, which is really wonderful. I freaking hate them. But you can see that this does really build up to a nice coverage level without a lot of work. And it smells a little bit like fry oil. When I first opened it, I was like, huh, okay. But I'm assuming that's because of, you know, some of the more pure low heat ingredients. And I'm just kind of twisting it in the pan. I thought that this was a mirror, but it's not really. It's just, I mean, I can see my reflection, but it ain't crisp. So uh, I'm not really sure what, I mean, mirrors do tend to fly in the face of the whole recyclability thing, but uh, this is a reusable package. I don't think that it is like supposed to be necessarily recyclable, but uh, I did. I found that a little strange that this like acts like a mirror, but it's not really a mirror. It's like, you know, if you needed to find orientation on your face, it's not if you needed to put on eyeliner. So this is not like RMS 
in the sense that RMS has like kind of one coverage level, even if you pile powder on top and then put more of the uncover up on top, like you still can't get full, full, full coverage out of an RMS, but you can get full, full, full coverage out of this. This is just really in its own category to me, the formulation. It's so beautiful and dewy without being really like runny and greasy feeling, but it has coverage without being drying. It's pretty cool. So I'm also going to take my finger so that I can kind of show you guys how this builds. And I can just pop that on top of some of my more pesky situations here. And it just blends really nicely. It's so lightweight that when you do build it up on a spot, you don't feel like you're wearing like that. You know how sometimes you put on concealer and you want to pile it up for coverage and then you powder it and everything and you're just like, oh cool, I just have like a mound of mud on my face now. It doesn't do that. Somehow it manages to stay really, really thin and then once it's on your skin, it doesn't really move around very much. So I'm just kind of using my pinky, my pinky, that's my ring finger navigating my own body and just adding a little more coverage underneath my eyes and you can like I said this will kind of dry down to a satin finish on its own um, but we are going to be powdering it today and don't worry guys yes this is a high-end product I do like to kind of you know run the gamut on all of the price points for these kinds of products we have some more stuff coming up soon that's going to be a lot less expensive. Um, I just got some stuff from Cloven Hallow. I just got my well people stuff. For those of you that are just like, um, Khaki, are you serious? $68 for a foundation? I mean, I've paid that for a foundation before. I paid that for the Cojan Doe Foundation, and this has a reusable package, so, you know, it's not like the craziest thing in the world. Someone actually asked me about the what's it called, Westman Atelier yesterday, and Tati actually uh, reviewed that not too long ago, and it really, like, piqued my interest, because she doesn't usually review that kind of stuff that's like, you know, high-end, natural, like, good ingredients kind of stuff. Um, she is moving a little bit more towards paying attention to her ingredients, and I'm very proud of her for that. Um, I'm going in with the translucent powder here on my big fluffy Thrive brush. You can kind of buff this. I don't think that the product moves around in a bad way. Like it never really budges on me once it's down, but I am just being super careful and kind of patting because when you have a pressed pan like this, it doesn't, your brush doesn't pick up as much product when you kind of run it through there as it would if you were using like a sifter. Um, but yeah, I do want to try Westman Atelier. I think that's what it's called. By Gucci Westman. These are all, you know, things that I have logged away in my brain. Accuracy is, you know, 85%. They're even more expensive than this. I think they sell them at like, you know, Neiman's. So let me know if that's something you guys are interested in or if you guys are like, you're crazy. Okay, so let me give this a little spritz real quick and then we will zoom in and I'll show you guys kind of how this dried down before I go and put the rest of my makeup on. Okay, so even with that translucent powder on top and a little spritz. You can see it still comes down to a really beautiful satiny skin finish. This is not a matte foundation by any means. It's very beautiful and creamy and it maintains that creaminess. I feel like whatever the ingredients in this are, the oils maintain their fidelity. They, they stay really flexible on your skin and um, hopefully that will show in a wear test, but you can just see like what an unbelievable finish. And I actually put this in an Instagram recently. I will put it up and show you which one because uh, it just, I felt like it looked so beautiful. It was the first time I ever tried it. And you guys were like, um, what foundation is this? <laughs> it is the Kiarwise and it, is pretty exceptional, even just at first blanche, like it just has a finish like nothing I've used and it has this like incredible flexibility, like incredible flexibility. So I'm gonna hop off, do the rest of my makeup so that I don't just look like this blinding ghost underneath my lights and, uh, and then we will talk about kind of price, ingredients, and claims. Okay guys, so this is my very fresh face of makeup on top of the Kiarwise foundation and powder. This is super, super simple. I really just did like cheek product, you know, your pigment product, your blush, your bronzer, your highlight, a little bit of brow, a little bit of mascara, a little bit of lip gloss. This foundation really lets the skin stand on its own. 
Um, I don't want it to make it seem like I've already got my mind made up on this. I do already like it, but I have not done a full wear test of it. I have not worn it for eight hours yet in my everyday life. So this will be, you know, new for me as well. Let me turn my lights away so you guys can kind of see how everything looks on top. It did kind of grab a little bit right here. I feel like maybe I didn't powder well enough and so the bronzer did kind of like, you know, try and grab. Um, so just be careful with that. But you can see it did stay really nice underneath my eyes. I don't usually, I don't know, lately I haven't really been going for like the really highlighted under eye. I have kind of a weird affinity for my tear troughs. I think that they're kind of cool. So uh, I don't really feel any need to like pack on a bunch of product under there, especially because it always ends up looking worse when I do that. Um, and then over top of the powder, I was able to add a little bit more just kind of with my finger of the foundation. And it built up really, really nicely over where I had that mole removed, over kind of my breakouts and stuff. And it doesn't want to gather which is really really nice <laughs> like you know i have this is always my personal issue is that i never get powder there <laughs> it's not that stuff creases necessarily it's that i never bother to get powder underneath my eyes like that because nobody's ever looking at me like that but you can see we still maintained that really really beautiful finish even with the products on top of it and this you know most things love a finishing spray this really loves a finishing spray and so um i just really really like the look of it and it doesn't what's nice is that it stays put um for a really lightweight cream product when you hit it with you know a more powder product on top of the brush or something it doesn't knock the product off which is so nice because i hate having to be super 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 careful um especially you know first thing in the morning when you're doing your makeup most of us aren't in the mood to be super careful so uh yeah i just just love the way that this stuff like goes on and stays put. Okay, so I have the website pulled up here and this says uh, the ingredient index is what we're gonna start with. Created from the highest quality materials sourced from around the world, each ingredient in a CureWise product has been carefully considered for its ability to work with the skin, not against it. So very similar to what we've seen, like I said, with like RMS. Things that are kind of low heat, um, ingredients that are meant to kind of adapt with your skin. They're supposed to, what's the word? Uh, they're bioactive, uh, which is, you know, the benefit of the price that you're paying for a lot of these products is that they kind of come from a skincare angle. They're better for your skin over the day than not wearing them. Every batch of makeup has been inspected by hand and remains free of parabens, silicones, petrochemical emulsifiers, and synthetic fragrances. Made in Italy. I didn't know that. Almost all of our products have been certified natural or certified organic by the stringent standards of the country's certification body, the Controllo de Certificación Prodotti Biologici. Suddenly I speak Italian. <laughs> and I did, on the website there is like an index of the difference between uh, organic and natural, like certified. You guys, it gets a little tedious. I'll let you read that on your own. It's just, you know, basic reference material, not necessarily pertinent to this brand in particular, but there are nuanced differences. So the main uh, highlighted ingredients here, uh, shea butter, skin superfood rich in fatty acids and vitamins A, E, and F, Di oh Lord. Dioscoria batatas. Uh, the transformative root of light is biodynamically grown and harvested through a method exclusively available to QRI. So I guess that's kind of their like exclusive ingredient, their proprietary thing. Gardenia florida uh, extract used to ward off free radicals and naturally protect from photo aging. So free radicals are the thing that makes us age. They are the oxidation things that, you know, we are all oxidizing. That is what we're doing. That is what aging is. Uh, rose hip seed oil, which my skin loves some rose. Uh, I don't know if rose and rose hip are the same thing. Are they? I need to do some research. Gentle, quick absorbing moisture packed with vitamins, antioxidants, and essential fatty acids. Rose marinus officinalis, which is rosemary extract. It's inherent astringency tones and balances skin while infusing it with iron, calcium, vitamins, and antioxidants. Whoa, Spilanthes acmella flower extract. This flowering plant gently relaxes muscles reducing the formation of expression lines while also boosting collagen structure. What? Uh, consider it nature's Botox? <laughs> oh, grr, uh, I'm into it, Kiara was. Okay, I'll take nature's Botox. Uh, sweet almond seed oil, a natural emollient used to moisturize and promote skin elasticity, probably has a lot to do with why this stays so nice and flexible on the skin. 
And Vanilla planifolia, rich in B vitamins, the antibacterial and antioxidant properties of this plant work to fight environmental stressors and keep skin calm. So, you know, even if you're not acne prone like I am, still everybody could use a little bit of anti-inflammatory, so that's nice. Holy moly, you guys, the rest of the pro of the uh, the ingredients are all in alphabetical order. This is crazy. Yeah, so like A to Z, you can see all the ingredients. I am not gonna bore you with that because I don't know what most of them do anyway. But this is interesting. Um, some of these things, like, I don't necessarily think of as being good things. Um, it does say fragrance as one of the ingredients, but it doesn't really tell you what. I'm wondering, because these don't have like a fragrance to them, at least the ones that I'm using. You know, there are a lot of these, like, I if anyone wants to like inform me on this, a bunch of these like chemical number names like CI77491, CI77492, like what are those? Maybe they're just proprietary ingredients, I don't know. These do have beeswax, so they are not vegan. I'm personally not anti-beeswax. I think, you know, my skin likes beeswax and as long as it's like responsibly sourced. There's argan oil and, uh, but it says like mica, you know? I don't, I don't know, is mica a bad thing? Silica, talc, like these are you know, ingredients that are in some of these powders. I'm not sure if they're in the ones that I particularly have. But, um, but yeah, I do think that like, you know, tin oxide, some of these things sound, I don't know. I am not a chemist. Some of these things might be completely vital to the stability of these kinds of products. Let me know. I'm, I'm not totally sure. I do appreciate that they share every single ingredient. There are so many of these products that are just kind of like, hey, here's our big ingredients. And then like, you have to really dig to find their all of their ingredients because some of them are terrifying. So I like how upfront they are. It says simple, but not plain. Beautiful, but always genuine. We love when things are done right, made right, and are built to last. In clothes we buy and the food we eat, we are now able to be conscious about the products we use without having to compromise for quality. So why not beauty? Kiara Weiss is leading the movement with high performing luxury makeup if it is as everything should be organic and sustainable. The FAQ is actually like, I encourage you guys if you're interested in this to go and read the FAQ because it is super helpful. If you don't use parabens, how do you preserve your makeup products? How long will they last? Like that's an important question. Our makeup is self-preserving through use of ingredients such as honeysuckle. A special heating and cooling process during formulation, KW products stay fresh and usable up to three years unopened and up to 12 months after they are open. If you buy makeup and don't use it for three years, I have questions. <laughs> Why isn't Kiara Wise makeup vegan? Uh, we ch we've chosen to use beeswax uh, for its nourishing properties, not directly from plants. Uh, because of this, Kiara Wise is not considered vegan. I love the makeup colors available, but they seem to go on quite sheer at first. Is there a way to create more coverage or a more dramatic look? Our products have a light touch when it comes to pigmentation. They were created with buildable coverage in mind, so it's easy to control how much or how little color is applied. Remember, Caraways is made from the nature's finest ingredients, so don't be afraid to use liberally. I think that that's actually one of the biggest things that I noticed from wearing this in comparison to a lot of other foundations, is that you build it up and you don't feel like you're wearing a cake of makeup. It's, you just have to feel it. It's, it's a really interesting thing. What are your plans for future products? We currently have an eyeliner, lipstick, and additional foundation shades in development. We love to hear our customers' insights on our brand, so let's please keep in touch. That is another thing that I wanted to do, is tell you guys how many foundation shades there are currently. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, we have fourteen. And yes, they are planning to roll more out, and yes, they should, because um, the darkest shade is, that's the darkest shade, which, you know, leaves a little to be desired. That's, that's not a good thing. But I do appreciate that they say that they're going to release more. That's, that's great. Um, and this is kind of a fuller coverage foundation, and so I do think that it's important to really dial in those colors. So um, yeah, that's just my piece on that. Again, I am the shade Lightness, which is, I believe, their lightest shade. So just keep that in mind. It is a very neutral shade. It doesn't kind of lean yellow like a lot of the stuff that I wear. I actually kind of prefer it, but it is a little bit light for me. Uh, I'm going to wear it for the rest of my day. I will check in with you guys at the end of my day after at least eight hours, and I will do the whole zoom in, check in, all of that. <laughs> Sometimes I get comments where people are like, how did it wear over the course of the day? I'm like, how much of the video did you watch? Um, I always do a check-in at the end, so uh, stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys in eight hours. <laughs> Bye, guys. Hey! Guys, it is the end of my day and time for the final check-in on this makeup. So, let's take a look here. And also, I completely forgot to talk about the price of these products, and so we're going to do that now too. <laughs> 
Ugh. I was like driving earlier and I was like, wait, I never did talk about the price, did I? No. So, uh, let's take a look here. Um, okay, so it wore in. And I kind of expect that it is not a like matte long wear, you know, that dries down to this like mask of makeup. And so, you know, it's supposed to stay like pristine or not at all. Um, this does have a forgiveness factor, which I love in any foundation that oh, when it does wear off, it's not going to make me look like an idiot because there, there's some huge texture difference between my skin and the makeup. So, um, I will say it dried up around my nose pretty bad, but that's probably because A, I piled it on top of my like healing area right here, and B, I've been wiping the crap out of my nose today. As usual, it is me at the end of the day. So, um, the rest of it has stayed really beautiful and like skin finish E, and I do have some, some thoughts here. It's Mascara is kind of going everywhere. Let me move you guys in real quick. Get real close here. And I'm sorry, I'm like kind of harried. I'm working on a painting for a friend of mine and I just poured the last layer of like shellac on top of it. But I used a pouring medium instead of a self-leveling medium, which I couldn't find a self-leveling medium. And it caused the pen to craze. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, but like it just, it's not perfect and so I'm losing my mind naturally so uh, yeah it's quarantined to the bathroom right now because I don't want I'm not speaking to it right now um but yeah so take a look here guys it did break up under my eyes a little bit I'm not really mad about it it's you know it's better to me than the uh, the crepiness that I get from like full coverage and like piling a bunch of powder on under there and like I said it did break up around here but that is because I've been touching it a lot and I had a little bit of breakup on my chin mainly in that spot that I piled the product onto but um I would say that you know all in all it nothing wore unevenly which I I love I really really like that as it wore off it didn't just like wear off in patches everything kind of stayed a similar texture as it wore in it really didn't do anything embarrassing. It still has that really gorgeous glow to it and that really great flexibility. Like you can see, you know, I do, I wrinkle my face a lot and I'm very expressive and we didn't end up with anything kind of gathering in those places in very, well, in any way at all, really. So before I talk final, final thoughts, let's talk about the price because yes, this does perform really well, but it still is an extremely expensive product for the amount of actual product that you get. So I'm looking here at the $40 refill for the foundation. So if you buy the case that it comes in and then you buy the refills, the case with your initial makeup in it is $68 and you get 0.28 fluid ounces of product. That is not very much. It's more than was in the little flesh beauty stick, but still it's, like way more um, price wise. And uh, then the, the refill is $40 for 0.28 fluid ounces. So that comes out to, I don't always do this, but $142 and 86 cents an ounce. It is a cream product, stick products, cream products tend to be, you know, less for your money uh, because they just tend to go further because like that sponge isn't soaking any of my product up, I guess is what I'm saying, but I still think that that's exorbitant. It's a beautiful product. I'm not sending it back, but I think it's exorbitant. Sometimes their page just doesn't load. Like, I don't know. Okay. So the powder is $58 and you really don't get much of the powder. You get, uh, 0.21 ounces or six grams. And I'm going to go ahead and say it, you guys there's nothing special about this powder. It broke up on me the same way that most lightweight powders would. It doesn't have any particular like finish that I'm just dying about. It smells kind of funky. Um, it definitely has, has a smell to it. Let me look at the ingredients here to see if there's anything that I'm like missing. So, uh, yeah, rice powder, argan oil, sunflower seed oil, and oh, a note on talc. While not formulated with talc, please note this ingredient appears on the product label due to non-active trace levels that can occur with natural minerals. Huh. They are like full disclosure, girl. And then the full ingredients list is mica, all, all organic, uh, mica, kaolin, uh, rice powder, perlite, 
jojoba oil, coconut alkalines, hydrogenated argan oil, uh, sunflower oil, carnauba wax, gallic acid, glycerol stearate, talc, iron oxide, iron oxide, iron oxide, ox, ox, did I just have a stroke? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the ingredients are there. They're totally awesome. Um, you know, so if that is what you're looking for in a powder, I mean, the RMS powder also has great ingredients and it's very lightweight and it's very beautiful and it's half this price. And that's weird to even say about RMS, <laughs> that RMS is half the price of anything because RMS is also expensive. And then also um, the, the Thrive powder is full of skincare. It is, it is absolutely like chock full of it and very, very, I sleep in it. So <laughs> more on that on Friday. I don't just sleep in my makeup. It, it, there's an explanation. But anyway, um, I don't necessarily think that like if you're going to splurge on these products, if you're going to pick one, don't go for the powder. It's not going to change your life. The foundation will probably change your life. <laughs> I mean, if this is something that you get excited about and you really like treating yourself to an experience every day where like your makeup is just genuinely working for you, like it's on your team, girl. There is nothing that is coming between you and this makeup. Like, yes. This is beautiful. It wears beautifully. It, I mean, I look really like glowy and I'm like looking at myself in my monitor right now. Every time I saw myself, I was just like, dang, like, you know, my, all my cheek pigment and everything just like glows. Like my skin looks noticeably pretty and it is because of this foundation. So, you know, if that's something that you have been disappointed with other foundations in the past because you're just kind of like, look, it's either not long wearing, it's dewy but it's not long wearing, or it's full coverage but it's way too matte and gross. Um, this is kind of like that perfect happy medium. And someone pointed out, you could just buy the pan and put it in a different like magnetic palette. <laughs> you don't have to buy this fancy freaking packaging. Uh, I do think that it's <laughs> delightful, but uh, it's completely unnecessary. Um, especially if you're already using reusable packaging, because that's their whole point, right? Is that it's reusable, you're not throwing something away. I mean, you're gonna throw a little pan away, but you're not gonna throw the whole package away. If you already have a package, you could be putting it in. I have no words. This painting is in my head. It's in my head, you guys. This is kind of like an almost perfect score with the exception of the price that you're actually paying for it, which I'm, I'm only saying that because I want to empathize a little bit with those of you who are like, you're crazy watching this, but I know for every person that is thinking that there is another person watching my channel being like, no, that's totally worth it. Like, you know, pay the price for the products, like pay the price for the ingredients, Kaki. Like, you know, we need to learn, like just like we do with clothing or anything else, that things that we expect to be really high performing and high quality are going to cost more. And we need to go ahead and like pay that premium for them because we need to raise our expectations for like what we want to put on and in our bodies. So just take that with a grain of salt. My, my personal philosophy on it is, is that to a certain point, like I still, you know, there are makeup brands that I don't think are worth the money. Um, but I'm going to continue using this. I'm not like mad. I have no buyer's remorse about this. I'm going to keep using the powder. It is chock full of really beautiful, uh, ingredients, but again, I don't think that it's going to like blow your mind or change your life. So, um, let me know if there are any other products from this company that you guys like are dying for me to try. Um, and I will check them out. If this was helpful and if you guys enjoyed it, then do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Guys, thank you so, so, so much for watching today and for hanging out with me. I love you and I will see you guys in the next one.